Well, it's the middle of hurricane season. You can probably feel it in the air. Uh, Right now, as we do this show, there are about four active hurricanes going on, uh, hitting all areas of this hemisphere. One uh, tropical storm, which is quite potent, heading for Hawaii. And believe me, when you're in, uh, in an island, when your entire state is, is, a, is an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and you got a big tropical storm taking dead aim at you, there's some reason for concern beyond just getting out the umbrellas. And then in the Gulf of Mexico, tragic flooding and, and tragic hurricanes, and another one on its way there right now. And of course, in the Atlantic Ocean, you've got a hurricane that's about to bear down on some of the mid-Atlantic states, especially the Carolinas and perhaps Virginia, a storm that will hit the coast uh, in a day or two and just stall there and uh, create rain and flooding and incredible winds. And this is just the middle of the hurricane season. We're halfway through it. Is weather getting more severe? You bet your little ass it is. Every storm that comes along, it seems, every year is a storm of the century. We're we're overusing the storm of the century thing. This this phrase, of the century, it's, it's the biggest of the century. We use that every year. This has been the hottest summer on record for most parts of the globe. In over a century, it's just or before records haven't even been taken, we're we're hitting milestones that we don't really choose to hit. I mean, there are milestones of success, of employment, of uh, milestones of 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 good things. There's a new milestone. We've hit a new high. Stock market, a new milestone. Those are good milestones. Actually, they're they're not, but they are. Uh, The milestones we seem to be hitting are the ones that are tragic. This is the worst ever on record. This is the worst of the year and the century. It's the worst of the, oh, most horrible of the century. We've never seen anything in this. This is is about, it's like, like never before, like never before have we had anything like even the presidency. Like never before did we have a president that was, that was so ballistically stupid and 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 dysfunctional i it's everything everything is the most of everything and i'm getting a little sick and tired of it i wish to return to normality for a period of time you know every once in a while it's nice to be normal it's not to have everything be like over spilling the borders it's the worst it's the i can't believe it has not been like this since the i mean enough of that stuff you're causing me stress. They're causing me stress. So, what do you do about it? Well, you listen to this program and that's really all you can do. On the air everywhere, this is New England Broadcasting. Welcome to the Ron Van Dam Show. Hello. Hold on tight. Right. Things can get a bit weird. If you like that sort of thing. <laughs> I kind of don't now. Whatever. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm tired of living on the edge. You know, for a while it was fun, you know. <laughs> I want to live on the edge. I want to... It's exciting. It's invigorating. I want to live on the edge. I never know if I'm going to fall off the edge or stay on the edge or fall the other way of the edge. I like the edge is exciting. Now, not so much. I've kind of had it with the edge. Don't kind of like the edge anymore. 
I am feeling like we can fall over the other end of the edge too easily now. Let's start backing away from the edge. Let's get back to the dry ground where things were pretty good, where I could breathe, just kind of know a little bit more what was perhaps in my near future. Kind of going to get away from the edge for now. You know what I'm saying? Just... <laughs> <laughs> Give me some 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 middle ground for a period of time so I can just sit in a hammock and relax instead of being on the edge all the time. That would be nice. They make medication for that, but you kind of don't want to do that. As a matter of fact, our guest later on in the show is going to talk about medication. He's a guy we've had on the show so many times. He's Dr. Cass Ingram. This is like his fifth visit. And Dr. Ingram does not believe in uh, pharmaceutical stuff. He thinks every ill that you have can be cured by herbal means, herb, herbal. You know, that the, like oregano and, and, and turmeric and whatever, you know, <laughs> like the pure forms of these simple herbs and things that grow on plants can really solve all your problems. Well, Dr. Ingram... Mm, yes and no. I mean, I don't like to take pills. Do you take pills in the morning? You know what? This is how you know how old you are. Seriously, this is how you know. If you're, I'd say, anywhere from 15 years old to 35, let's say. Let's call it 30. Let's call it 30, 35. You probably don't take any pills whatsoever. You never go to the doctor because you're just fine all the time. You get a little cold, you go, oh, I'm sneezing, oh, big deal. At 35 to, say, 55, you start taking the pills. You know, you find, oh, I, I got, uh, I've got a irritable bowel disease. I, I can't eat everything I used to eat. I seem to be allergic to this food all of a sudden. And, oh, my back is starting to kill me, man. I don't know. I must have moved the wrong way or something or... Uh, Shoulder pain all of a sudden. I live with it. You know, my shoulder. I had some shoulder pain going on. You start to have some concerns, you know. Maybe your kidney starts hurting, and you got to be a little bit careful there, you know. This 35 to 55 is you better start being careful age. And by then, you're prescribed some pills, perhaps for a little bit of high cholesterol. we got to watch that. Uh, eating a lot of sugar, you got to cut down on the sugar a little bit, babe. Got to exercise a little bit more, babe. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah, you better start to, your blood pressure, good, but not great. We're going to put you on a little low dose of, of uh, high blood pressure medication here, get your blood pressure down, and a little bit of that cholesterol stuff going, you know. That's 35 to 55. You start dabbling in the pills by prescriptions. You know, they're, 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 uh, they're recommended that you, you better start doing this. You know, you got it. You know, you don't have the problem, but you may have the problem. We're going to put you on this right now. 55 until the end of your life, which is a long stretch, uh, is the, uh, uh, you better buy one of those pill organizers because you're taking upwards of three to 10 pills twice a day. For all different things. And all of a sudden, your body starts uh, aching in places that you didn't know you had. Like, wow, I didn't, I didn't know I could hurt over there. I, I didn't even know I had a spot over there. And little things start breaking out on your skin. It's your first visit to a dermatologist. A dermatologist, what the f... That's the skin doctor. Skin doctor for what? For skin? What are you talking about? That's acne. It's a blemish. You better start seeing the skin doctor. It could be skin cancer. You want to check it out. You should go once a year. What? And it's time to get that colonoscopy. We're going to stick a tube up your ass with a camera, an HD camera, actually. It's 4K. And uh, we just want to make sure there's no polyps in it. Why? Because, you know, they start growing at a certain age. We want you to do this every, like, three to five years. What? Yeah, all of a sudden, 55. It's just, and, and nobody can avoid it. Nobody can avoid it. That's how you will, how old you know you are. Take the number of pills that you uh, ingest every day, divide it by six, and that's how old you are. <laughs> I don't. I, that's not the equation. I don't know what the equation is. My point is, the more pills you take, the older you are. All right, pretty much. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so, Doctor Cass Ingram says, pills, schmills. Well, you know, don't stop taking pills 
you know, until you talk to your doctore, certainly. But Dr. Cass says, no, you know, most of this herbal, this herbal stuff in its purest form is really could do the trick for you. So we'll speak to him later on in the show. And, and when I have him on the program, I always have to tell you ahead of time, and I'll remind you again just before we do the interview later on, um, I'm not recommending this. I'm not condoning it. I'm not doing anything. I'm just interviewing the guy. You make your own decisions if it makes sense to you, whatever. But check with your doctor first. Don't do any changes to your anything without checking with your doctor because you may have a thing going on you're not aware of or it may uh, interact with some medication you're taking or that you're not taking. Who knows what the hell I'm talking about. Okay? All right? Good. All right. Yeah, fine. Well, whatever. Bob Woodward's book uh, called Fear has come out. Uh, Bob Woodward is, is one of the most respected journalists of our time. He actually exposed the Watergate situation through reporting uh, with his uh, the paper that he was working with, the Washington Post. He's still with the Washington Post. He's one of the most respected reporters, as I said, uh, on the planet. Uh, he actually uh, gave the information uh, to the public about uh, Nixon uh, doing some bad shit and uh, was eventually impeached, and, and then he resigned uh, the presidency. It was one of the most scandalous uh, occasions of the White House ever, ever, ever. Oh, there you go. The biggest ever. <clears throat> Bob Woodward is uh, at it again, uh, and this time it seems to be even of more concern to him. Uh, he reports uh, in his book that uh, Donald Trump is uh, <sighs> problems. <laughs> big, big problems. He has spoken to many people that surround Donald Trump, and they candidly actually gave him quotes. And he exposes them in the book and many people are saying you know when you write a book you're just trying to sell copies not always yes for the most part you write a book you try to sell copies yeah but there are people who write books and they do sell copies because the information in them is is quite appealing to people uh, you also do it in order to inform the people and he is a reporter and he has been doing it all his life and his he don't need the money. Uh, he does this. It's in his blood to expose what he actually literally hears. Um, yeah. Uh, most of the people that he quotes in the book say, uh, that's not accurate. I never said that. Uh, Bob Woodward never called me uh, to, uh, to get an interview before, you know, to get information from his book. He never called me. Bob Woodward says, yes, I did. I called all those people. I am a respected reporter. I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for decades and decades and decades and decades. I call everybody when I'm going to quote them by name. And in the cases, almost all cases, the response by those that I wish to interview said, no, we've been to either we've been told by the White House not to give any information for any books at all. Or they say, I have no comment at this time. So, <laughs> or they say, I will tell you, Mr. Woodward, but it has to be off the record. And Woodward, being a, a, a great reporter, said, I can't do off the record. Anything you say to me is fair game. If, you, if you're going to do things off the record, I'm not interested in hearing them because I, I'm not going to use them anyway. I mean, nobody wanted to talk to Woodward because they knew of his uh, his expertise. This book is fascinating. It's also scary. Uh, fear uh, covers two subject matters. It's the fear that many of the uh, people that uh, work for uh, the White House and for the president, and also most people in the country are fearful as to what we really have on our hands here. The other part of the fear is that the president apparently uh, he rules with fear. He always has. One of the greatest revelations in this book is something that the president actually said himself, and I heard it, because with this president, he says everything out loud, and then you say, well, I heard you say that. He says, no, I didn't. Well, I just heard you say that. Now you're calling me a liar? No, nah, I didn't say that. But I played the tape for you. This is what you actually said, and you play the tape, and he goes, that must have been edited or doctored or something. That was out of context. Holy shit, man, what's wrong with you? 
And the answer is, and this is what he said verbatim, he says, I don't apologize because that's a show of weakness. He never apologizes. Teach that to your kids, why don't you? Go to your kid today. Go to your child and say, you know, I never want you to apologize or say you're sorry for anything you've ever done, ever, because that would be a weak thing to do. That would be a, a, a sniveling, weak display of, 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 a, of a pathetic individual admitting that they did something wrong. Never admit that you did something wrong, ever. Never apologize. Never say you're sorry. Tell that to your kid. Because that's what your president told us. And it's examples like that that piss me off. Again, he does a lot of policy stuff that is is destroying this country. It's not on the edge. It's over the edge now. But that's not what really gets to me. It's that this guy is a model citizen of crap. He's everything you don't want your friends to be. He's everything you don't want your children to be. He's everything you don't want to be. He's everything that you're, you don't want your spouse to be, that you want your boss to be. He's everything that you don't like and you don't want. He's a despicable human being. And that doesn't just border on some type of uh, extreme mental issue. It is an extreme mental issue. And it doesn't stop there. Country second, Trump first. A love of dictators, a hatred of friends and, and fellow patriots and countries that have stood by our side forever. A verbal hatred toward them, a verbal love and respect for dictators. I don't know how much longer you can put up with this. And then you've got a Republican Party that is scared to go against the president for fear that they may lose their seat. They may lose their job because so many people seem to like Trump in their party. They have given up country as well for power. It's sad. Our deficit is now well over a trillion dollars. And that's because Trump actually says, according to Woodward's book, and it has been quoted, that Trump actually uh, went to our Treasury Department and said, print more money. And they said, Mr. President, it doesn't work like that. We can't just print more money. And the president says, why not? He says, because it doesn't work like that. This money is supposed to represent something. Our deficit is higher than our gross national product, the money that we take in. We owe more than what we take in. A lot more. (laughs) You know who we owe the money to? China. China. One of our enemies, or at least not real big partners here, (laughs) who basically protect and side with North Korea, we are bestowed upon them because... They own us. They they invest in the United States and they own parts of it. We owe them tons of money. What an odd position to be in. What an odd position to be in. And as the stock market has never been better, the best of the century, it can crash tomorrow because nothing backs that money. Our deficit is so high that it becomes fictitious. And those that voted for Trump, you better realize people are making a killing in the stock market. If you have enough money to play the stock market and you need enough money to play the stock market, if you don't have much, you don't get anything. If you have a lot of money, you can do really well in the stock market. They're doing well. That's where the economy is being judged. You... Has your paycheck gone up? And if it has, does it come close to you making another dollar? Because the price of goods are going up, all of them, all of them. And it hasn't even really started to go up. 
according to what this uh, trade deficit is going to be like, and these trade wars and these trade tariffs, you're going to be paying more, and not that much more is going to be coming into your pocket, if anything. Sure, you have a job. Sure, the unemployment rate is, is very, very low. Sure, you got a job, but are you being paid well for it? No. No. And this is all coming out. And the Republican Party, which used to be the party of fiscal conservatism, just, of course, recently uh, approved this tax cut, which made the rich richer. And those that don't make that much money staying in the same, not that make, not that make much money uh, category. And the deficit has gone higher. And the Republican said, sure. Why not? Trump said it. I'm too scared to do anything about that. Well, I go on and on and on and on. All I ask of you as a, as a person and a human being who lives in this country, all I ask of you is just follow it. Follow stuff. Follow stuff. Find out what's really going on, what the truth is. Well, enough about that. I could go on and 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 on, and on but I don't want to. Anyway, uh, hey, Dr. Cass Ingram is going to join us. Uh, and again, a little disclaimer, whatever he says, I have nothing to do with. You can just let him talk. Um, if it sounds interesting to you, pursue it. If it doesn't, then don't. But always check with your doctor before changing any medications or anything or any modification to what you take or any additions to what you take because it could interact. Okay, fine. We'll be right back with the doctor after this. <laughs> The internet has literally millions upon millions of sites offering entertainment, information, and insights. And yet you ended up here. Oh, that's got to sting just a little bit, huh? Well, make the most of it. It's the Ron Van Dam Show on New England Broadcasting. Dr. Cass Ingram joins us. We've spoken to him many times before. Very interesting because it involves the uh, well, the more natural way of taking care of just about everything you can think of that, that ails you. And he joins us again today because we're in a back-to-school mode here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there are certain challenges involved in that that may have some uh, answers for you, Dr. Cass Ingram. I know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the kids are like a brewery of germs, and then you get them all together in the school yeah, from summer to this yeah. uh, conglomeration, and you can have topical and you can have internal infections. Then you get leveraged into taking antibiotics for what might not even, you know, be the good idea. Yeah. So yeah, we, yeah, yeah, antibiotics uh, not always the healthiest uh, uh, realm. They're, like you say, it's it's more of a well, just in case kind of thing. Yeah, that's right. And you think about the fact that these are little teeny creatures, and <laughs> and you're loading them up with <laughs> drugs. And if you could do something natural, uh, how often do you hear of a school kid that just outright dies from a little skin something or a little respiratory? Right. Right. So that's where, uh, unless it's you know a, a documented case of strep throat or or something sure. extremely dangerous, we ought to be doing the natural for the children. Well, most people don't know what the natural is, and I guess that's why you're here. Yeah. Well, the kingpin we've talked about before. I just published a brand new doctor's guide to oil of wild oregano. Previously, we had the cures in the cupboard you know mm -hmm. about. Yep. But in there, you find that the oil of wild oregano is the kingpin for topical use on the skin, for acne, for ringworm, for contagious skin conditions that kids pick up, mild to moderate eczema, mm -hmm. uh, athlete's foot, of course, is a problem as they get more athletic, toenail fungus, but also for like bronchitis or sinusitis or more commonly rhinitis, colds, flu, bronchial congestion, stuffy, snotty kid. Uh, so... Uh, so, and if you know what kind of oregano oil to purchase, the original mm -hmm. people who started it, who've done the eight clinical and, 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 and in vitro trials, and you get the P73 oregano oil, it's totally safe to give to the children. Now, is this, are, are we talking uh, internal or external? Both. Okay. That, that wild oregano is 100% wild from the mountains about 
7,000 to 12,000 feet above sea level. It's yeah. safer than drinking water. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's coming from a very remote part of the Mediterranean. That wild oregano has been used for hundreds of years for children, adults, teens, and even uh, in this case, like infant, you could rub it on the bottom of the feet. Oh. If you get the right kind, it's got to be in an olive oil emulsion. I'm not talking about essential oil of oregano. Forget mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Forget it. I'm talking about the type that's specifically for human use, you see? Mm. And in that way, if we wanted to give a little bit on the bottom of the feet and a little on the chest while we're seeing our doctor, if we want to, we know it's viral, we don't want to give the antibiotics, we've got a three-year-old with a snotty nose, we rub it on the feet, rub it on the shins, up up and down the spine, give Mm -hmm. a drop or two and some honey twice a day. We could do that. I mean, I talk about it in my book. I'm not going to just say it in the book, not tell you on the radio. Right. Uh, And so, yeah. yeah. Is it now? Is can this be used as a preventive for those that may feel that that's necessary, or are preventives in this, these situations? No, preventive is a good idea. Oh, it is. Oh, why? Yeah. Why would you want to get junk or have kids come home with junk and then you get the crud? Yeah. If you could just give them a drop a day and and every night rub their feet and shins, yeah. uh, a little on the chest, huh. and so they don't get the car- the garbage. You see, if you throw that, if you throw that wild oregano complex into the bloodstream. Yep. Uh, and, and transdermally through the skin, the viruses can't set hold. You know, we did that study and published it in antiviral research mm. uh, with Ijaz and my colleagues. And what we did was we not only obliterated the cold and flu virus with the P73 oil in a very minor dose, mm-hmm. one in a thousand. So mm-hmm. if you had a thousand, uh, uh, you know, ounces of blood in you and you had one ounce of oregano oil, it sterilized the blood. Mm. You don't have a thousand ounces. You have less than that. I hope so. And and so, wait a minute. How many ounces do we have? We have. Let's think right, about it. Right. You have five liters of blood. Right. So you don't. Yeah, you don't even have that. Right, okay. So, yeah, so okay. now, now, uh, so if you just, we found out that if you keep a little bit of oil of oregano yeah. in the bloodstream, yeah. okay, the virus can't grow. Hmm. Uh, could I could I cook with this modestly? Well, we rub our chickens and turkeys with a dropper full or two, and it tenderizes the meat, and it tastes delicious. So, yes. Yeah, I mean, if you if you were making marinara or spaghetti sauce, just two or three drops. That's More than that. About. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Plus, if you want to, you know, put it in a marinade. Yeah. And so, that's... All right. There are good purposes for that. Okay. Well, and, and they found, the study done by the federal government found that if you put a little bit of oil oregano in, in a marinade with tuna, yeah. fresh tuna, the fresh tuna is still edible in the refrigerator 30 days later without cooking. In other words, wow. it, it prevents the tuna from that's going weird. bad. That's, that's, that's major. Well, yeah. yeah, tuna goes bad in two or three days. Everything goes bad in two or three days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so uh, what if uh, your child has uh, a cold, which your child will get uh, over the winter when they're uh, touching other people? Um, yeah. Does it shorten the life of the cold or make yes, it, it less? It uh, yeah. It really does. I mean, you can cut the symptoms down 80%. Mm. And if you know how to use it aggressively, you can just obliterate the whole thing before it sets hold. Yeah. Because, you know, those viruses attack the, the lining of the respiratory tract and the sinus cavity. That, that's the, the, the point that I was going to make, because for many people, a cold is, is just a cold. For others, it starts the complications of other things if you don't pay attention to it. You can get into a pneumonia or, exactly. or like bronchitis and then a hospitalization. Exactly. Uh, exactly. So in antibiotics, by the way, they're, they're not indicated in the cold or flu. Yeah. They're not even indicated in bronchitis and sinusitis because that, because that's fungal. Right. They're not indicated in food poisoning or food mm-hmm. reaction or mm-hmm. diarrhea. They're contraindicated. Mm-hmm. But oil of oregano, uh, the P seventy three, is indicated in all of those. So you've got a little pharmacy in a bottle. Yeah. It's the number one thing. People talk about colloidal silver. I don't use it because it's it's still metallic. Yeah. People talk about echinacea. It's good, but the number one thing you should consider is a germicide, a viruscide, a fungicide, mm-hmm. a, a bactericide, something that kills all that stuff. You know, we, 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 don't, uh, we don't usually talk pure when it comes to uh, these remedies. They're usually manufactured uh, on over-the-counter shelf uh, in a pharmacia, and uh, there are usually additives involved and preservatives. 
we don't really see a lot of this pure anything anywhere. No, it's very rare. Even supplements, if you look carefully at the bottle, you might see citric acid, ascorbic yeah. acid. Mm-hmm. You might see maltodextrin, stearic acid kind mm-hmm. of things. We're talking very pure. We're talking oil of wild oregano in an extra virgin olive oil base. Mm-hmm. End of story. Mm-hmm. All right, so people are saying as we're listening to this, okay, fine, I get it, but where do I get it? I mean... If I can't get it in a, a, over the where, where the hell am I going to get this? Well, thing? you're going to have to go to the higher quality health food store and demand the P73. Keep in mind, it's, we've done scientific studies on that. Uh, I don't own the company, mm-hmm. but I do own my books. And mm-hmm. in my books, I, I recommend, it just so happens, I recommend the P73. I mm-hmm. know it's reliable. I use it clinically. I use it on my patients. I use it every day. I dispense it with children and mm-hmm. adults. So I can tell you that if you get that, you're going to get the results with no toxicity. And that's the one to use for children. I wouldn't use any other brand for the kids. If Mm -hmm. you're using another brand for yourself, adults can get away with it. But uh, P73 only for children or little teeny creatures. Or pets. All right. Okay, uh, we're running short of time. Let's run through uh, how we can actually, uh, well, get involved in your books. Well, it'd be like vitamin shop or mom and pop health food stores. You have to know what you're doing. Go to oregano.com and study. They don't try to sell anything there. Just study the information. Oregano.com. My website, uh, kazingram.com. The best book probably is The Cures in the Cupboard. They're doing some kind of special five and ten bucks off. Nice. I'm not, you know, we're here to talk and help people. But nice there's stuff. the book if you want it. The cure is in the cupboard. Kazingram dot com, uh, or the newest one, Doctor's Guide to Oil of Oregano. Perfect. Hey, I know we'll talk again, and uh, Let's I look talk forward and to see it. how the season goes, and maybe yeah. we won't have a big problem. But if uh, epidemic strikes, call the doctor. Good to know what to do when it does. Yep. Th- thanks for your time, Doctor Kaz. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, there you go. There you go. I don't know what else to tell you. I have no idea what else to tell you. Uh, Have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, day. Make it the best you can. Do what you can with this, okay? And tomorrow's another day. So if things don't go too well today, you got tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, take it easy. I wish you peace.